In this video, we're going to talk about Java keywords and identifiers. Now, Java keywords is a word in Java that has some type of special meaning to the language. We've already seen some examples such as public, class, void, static. These all are terms that have special meaning and special place inside of the programming language syntax. Now, these words are reserved by the Java language, meaning that you cannot use them outside of their intended purpose. For example, you cannot make a method called void. Uh, the Java compiler would smack that right down. Right now, there are 51 keywords inside of Java, two of which are not in use, and then there's a couple special cases with identifiers. So let's take a look at these keywords here. These are a list of the Java keywords. And these are all things that you cannot use for things like class names, variable names, method names. Not very happy about it. Now in the lower right hand side, you see I have a bold other. That is not a keyword, but the words below it do have special meaning. The true, false, and null, those are literals for the values. So a, a variable can be true or false or null. And then var is a special keyword that was introduced into Java 11 introduced that. So that is uh, basically an object type where the compiler can infer the type and we'll be getting into things like that in the future. Just remember, these are all words that you cannot use for naming of Java identifiers. Now Java identifiers themselves. These are names that you define it when you're programming. They're going to be for things like class names, methods, variable names, constant names, package names, pretty much anything that you as a developer are going to assign a name to in your program. Now there is no pragmatic max length. It's over 65,000, might even be higher than that in Java 11. You better not be naming a 10,000 name variable inside of Java. That'd be absolutely crazy. There's absolutely no reason to do that. So pragmatically, there's no maximum length. The other rule of an identifier is it cannot be a keyword. So under valid examples here, these are all valid examples of identifiers within Java. These can be class names, variable names, constant names, package names. So these are all valid things to Java. Now let's take a look at some of the rules for naming them. These identifiers, they can be any upper or lowercase letter. So that's any letter between A to Z or capital A to Z or a number value from zero to nine. So anything in there, and then they can also use the underscore and dollar sign. Any combination of these are fine. Keep in mind they are case sensitive. So if you change case, the, they will be different identifiers to the Java programming language. Now they cannot have spaces or any other special characters. I have a couple examples there on the slide deck. That is not an inclusive list. There are other special characters. It is strictly limited to letters, numbers, underscore, dollar sign. Now, these are the general rules for identifiers. There are several commonly accepted conventions. Class names should be what's called Pascal case. This is basically camel case with a starting capital. And we've already seen camel case used. So that, that is going to be where you are capitalizing any key word in a, in a string. Now, constants, what you see in the Java programming language is to use uppercase separated with underscore. So I have an example there, my underscore constant underscore name. And then packages are all lowercase. Reverse domain name is preferred. Now I do want to point out these are conventions. They are not necessarily enforced by the programming language. So a lot of times you probably can get away with violating these in a number of different use cases. Not necessarily a good idea to do. It might work in one place and might not work in another. So it may catch you in trouble if you try to uh, violate any of these commonly accepted conventions. So I would not recommend doing that. So you can see overall within the Java programming language, when you are naming identifiers, you do have quite a bit of flexibility in coming up with names that have meaning to you as a developer. And you should be choosing names that do bring value rather than short abbreviations that nobody can remember what they mean.